Now, I think it's pretty safe to say that there are a handful of Star Wars fans out there that have a lot of mixed reactions on Episode 4 for a number of reasons. I think the biggest one of all has to do with the fact that this episode is only a short 35 minutes. And I don't know about you guys, but this is a common trend among Lucasfilm with each and every series, like The Mandalorian, The Book of Boba Fett, and more, where the middle point or pretty much more closer to the end, that one episode that's very, very short. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars updates. By the way, guys, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support. It is greatly appreciated. Now, episode four, all right, we talked about what, of course, you know, you did not know about that episode, all thanks to Deborah Chow and Joby Harold in the last post that we put up. If you guys want to go ahead and check that out, we went over all the things that you did not know about episode four. And in this specific scenario, we actually learn more about an alternate ending or an original ending, whatever have you, for episode four of the Kenobi series, which in my opinion, totally outperforms the ending that we got in the final version or the final cut of episode four of the Kenobi series, also known as part four. Now, given that it all pretty much takes place on Fortress Inquisitorius, all right, it really was a nice callback to A New Hope as Joby Harold really confirmed that. He talked about that a little bit and I understand that, but there's one thing about Joby Harold, by the way, guys, that I believe has a lot of flaws. He seems to not really fully understand the lore. And we talked about the things that he really missed when it came to the Star Wars lore in the past post, if you guys want to check that out. Now, with that being said, however, recently both Joby Harold and Deborah Chow got involved in an interview where they were able to talk more about the original ending, the original intended ending of episode four of the Kenobi series. And let me tell you, it is superior, so it does take a lot of elements from episode three, but let's get right into it. Now, with that being said, with both Joby Harold and Deborah Chow becoming more vocal with each episode that releases, revealing new details about the series, they eventually went on to discuss an alternate ending or original ending of Kenobi episode four that they were working on with, of course, before the rewrites took place and also some refilming. Deborah Chow went on to reveal and state, we actually had a very dramatic ending in mind for the end of episode four that would involve both Vader and Kenobi dueling again on Fortress Inquisitorius. We actually had filmed some of those scenes where, of course, we were originally going to have both Vader and Kenobi duel it out in the tomb where Kenobi begins to realize that all of these Jedi and Force sensitives are molded into the chambers. This is where Kenobi was supposed to feel a deep sense of fear, where he sees one of his great friends encased in the tomb that would spark a spike of fear that would make Vader know exactly where Kenobi was. We originally were going to have both Vader and Kenobi duel in this tomb that was going to serve as an homage to the Empire Strikes Back, the way that we wanted to do the fight. It was going to be a very intense battle between the two old friends, where we were going to have Vader set Kenobi on fire in this episode instead of episode three, where there would be some kind of gas leak, like where Vader throws his saber toward Kenobi and ignites his body. We were gonna have Kenobi's Jedi attire completely engulfed in flames, where Tala would come in and start defending him against Vader by creating an explosion. Here, we would have Kenobi jump off of the fortress and into the ocean to distinguish the flames on his clothing and his skin. Now let me just stop right here for a second. Now, that to me, I don't know about you guys, sounds more like Star Wars in the prequel trilogy movies. This kind of is reminding me of the battle between, I know it's not Vader, but it reminds me of the battle between both Jango Fett and Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I know it's two different characters, but it just reminds me of that. I don't know why, but it reminds me of that type of fight that they were going for where it was going to take place, you know, on, you know, a ocean surrounded structure that was really going to involve Kenobi and Vader, where Vader was going to set Kenobi on fire like this. That to me sounds a lot more dark and the fact that they were taking elements from episode three and throwing it into episode four, you can see where they got the inspiration from to use in the third episode that we got. So moving on, all right, Deborah Chow and Joby Harold continue to reveal more about this alternate ending to episode four. 
Now she goes on to say that we originally were going to make Vader badly burned. Joby Harold eventually began the state and actually began to chime in. We also wanted to actually show Kenobi getting very badly burned as well. Just like Deborah Chow said, we really wanted to do this, but we also wanted to create an episode where it would be very spy heavy like in Rogue One. We really wanted to explore that, so we ended up cutting that entire scene and taking elements of that to use in episode three, such as Kenobi getting set on fire and receiving those burns and Tala protecting him. It was a scene that nearly made it to the final cut and served as the ending of episode four, where it would end with a ta with Tala dragging Kenobi onto an Imperial shuttle that is operated by these rebels in disguise. Now that's a very interesting thing that he brings up is that Vader was also going to receive burns in the fourth episode of Kenobi. Basically his suit would be burned, his cape would be burned, etc. And it would have been very interesting because both characters would have received, you know, a burn to a degree on Fortress Inquisitorious. Now, this, I don't know about you guys, but this sounds superior compared to what we got in episode four in the final cut. And I talked about the final cut of episode four. Did it feel lackluster? Yes, at times it did. Um, did it really feel like Rogue One? Absolutely, I love that. I kind of like the fact that they went with the whole spy route because it creates tension, you know? I think that Tala is a great character, to be honest. I think that she has more personality than Reva. And honestly, I think that, you know, the character's just better written. That's just my opinion. So, on top of all of that, Deborah and Joby really wanted to make it clear that they actually cherry-picked elements from the original ending of episode four that was cut and use that as inspiration for episode three. You can see the parallels, right? Basically, you know, Kenobi getting burned, uh, you know, uh, Vader getting pretty much distracted by Tala where she creates an explosion and saves Kenobi. It's similar, but it's way different at the same exact time. You know, you don't have Vader, uh, you know, missing out on Kenobi jumping into the ocean, etc. So she goes on to say, and Joby goes on to continue, it was going to be very intense where Vader was going to actually punish Reva eventually for luring Kenobi to the fortress by kidnapping Leia. Joby continues to state the following. We also wanted to end with the last shot actually showing Kenobi being inserted into the back of the tank with severe burns all around his body and not just his arm and side. We were really going to go very dark originally, where the ending shot was going to be Kenobi opening his eyes as Vader opens his, as they both are sharing the same pain in their back to tanks at the same time. That was the original ending that we were going to pursue that never ended up happening for us. So, Joby Harold once again. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I always kind of was a little on edge about him writing the Kenobi show. If you guys are very unfamiliar with Joby Harold, all right, here's kind of a little bit of a recap real quick of who Joby Harold really is. Now, Joby Harold, I don't know if you guys knew this, but he directed quite a handful of movies out there, quite a handful of projects before in the past, but they never really got good reviews. I mean, he did Awake with Hayden Christensen, didn't do all well. You know, he did uh, other movies out there, you know, such as Robin Hood, which was a big flop. I mean, that's just to name a few. But let me know what you guys have to say about all this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.